Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22 on the Silver Run Forest map. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we're going to get our uh, new field plowed and planted with grass and get some sheep going and uh, buy a few more pieces of equipment in probably the reverse order of what I just said. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, no, let's start with the equipment. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to buy a tr another tractor, a medium tractor. And this tractor is primarily going to be used to tend the, uh, the hay field and the sheep arm. And I've decided I'd like to get a John Deere 6R. I do like uh, these tractors here. And I want something, you know, with a, a pretty decent amount of horsepower. Uh, so we're going to get the 300 horse version of this. And uh, as far as the tires go, um, let's go with Continental Michelin. Let's go with Michelin. That's fine. I don't think we need like wide tires or anything like that. Not really worried about a front loader attachment on this. Um, do I want a GPS on this tractor? Mm, that's going to be another 15 grand. Yeah, what the heck? Let's do it. Uh, okay. Yep. So that is it. Why don't we, do I want to lease to own this? Yeah, why don't we? Why don't we lease to own this? And that way, if um, it comes on sale or something else equivalent to it, you know, we can then purchase the sale item or eventually just own this from leasing it. Okay, cool. So that takes care of the tractor. Now what we need is we need a baler. We already got the mower. And I downloaded from the mod hub the balers that have the V-rake attached to them. So um, the case and the New Holland are a little more expensive than the Kloss and the Krone. I'm not really sure why. So let's look at these. So this uses 250 horse. It can go up to 12 miles an hour, and they, uh, and they should all do 240 centimeter. It, this one's also lighter than the Krone, too. Otherwise, it's the same. That's heavier in 250 horse. So this is still the lightest one overall. That's heavier. And that's heavier. So, yeah, I mean, this one seems to be the best choice by virtue of the fact that it's lighter than all of the rest of them. Uh, otherwise, they, they seem to be the same. Uh, so let's go ahead and lease to own the Kloss as well. Very good. Um, we don't need we don't need a windrower and we don't need a tether because we're not going to make hay. We're just going to do straight up grass bales for the sheep. But what I might actually do, I'm not going to do this right away. But what we're going to do is we're going to purchase, in fact, let's do that right now. We're going to purchase uh, 42 for, really, that's only $36,000. Okay. We're going to purchase that, and we're going to convert this to an actual hay field, because right now it just has wild grass on it. And the hay fields, we, we already put in, like, the barn and the, uh, the sheep barn over here but the field's going to kind of come all the way along this strip and end right about here. Oh, incidentally, I did plant, um, I replanted this off camera too. So all of uh, 36, except for the part on the side of the lake where we're doing the field has been replanted with ponderosa pine and lodgepole pine. So I just, I just did that off camera because you guys have seen me do it a couple times now and it's kind of just driving around and, and plopping saplings into the ground. Yep, so all of this out here has been replanted. Okay, so we need to also lease a plow. I'm not going to lease to own it because at this point in time, this little bit of farming that we're going to do on this grass field is really the only farming I'm planning on doing for this whole entire Silver Run Forest series. Now, you know, I can always change my mind later, but at this point, I'm not really planning on doing any other farming. And that really the only reason we're even doing this bit of farming is uh, for the sheep so that we can do wool and uh, fabric. Okay, so let's go into here and we're going to go to plows. 
we're going to lease my favorite uh, plow here. We want the 9MT. And that's going to require 320 horse. So it's actually a little bit more than the John Deere can handle. It'll probably still be okay. How much horsepower do we have on our, on our Voltra? Voltra has 305. And the John Deere has 300, right? Yeah, it should be fine. It, it's a little bit, but... The, the good thing is we don't have any hills. It's pretty flat, so I think it'll it'll be fine, even though it's just a little more than it's rated for. The other thing I wanted to do, too, is I think we're going to go ahead and s sell the, um, the Volvo. Uh, I just don't really need it because we have the John Deere now and we have the, um, uh, the Voltra. Um, I wonder, though... If I want to keep this, nah, I don't think we'll keep the this winch and blade either because we have an extra one plus we have the winch on the skitter. So I think we're just going to sell this whole kit and caboodle. Well, let's take and wash it first. I know we don't technically need to, but we will anyways because if you're going to sell a piece of used equipment in real life, you would likely wash it first and fix it up. So we will do the same. This was a great tractor to, to start out with, but I haven't used it in a while and it's got relatively low horsepower, so I think it's time to to sell it and get a little bit of money back from it for other things. We'll do this one first, we'll repaint it, we'll repair it, and we'll sell it. We'll repaint the Volvo and sell it for $66,000, but we only made about 40 some odd off of it. Okay, cool. So that takes care of that. We are up to, uh, back up to 800, or yeah, $801,586. And I think we have everything we need to get going on the field. So let's jump into the John Deere. I, whoops. I have used this tractor several times uh, doing contracts and uh, really like it. So we're going to mow and bale the wild grass first. And once we get, you know, that done, then we can, then we can actually get the sheep because we'll have something to feed them. And then we'll do the plowing afterwards. I think this is my first John Deere tractor that I've owned in Farming Simulator. Well, no, actually, that's not true. I had a 7R seven, seven series on um, the multiplayer server that I had for a little while. So this is, isn't my first John Deere. We set up our spinnery, yes, uh, well, yesterday for me and last episode for you guys. That's good. I suppose we could mow some of this grass too. We might as well. But we are going to plow all of this up over here and turn it into actual grass grass. Planted grass, field grass, however you want to say that. Okay, so let's get everything unfolded here. We want to make sure these are set to swath mode. There we go. All right. Oh, I need to turn off real mower and I need to also turn it off on here okay so now it should drop grass for us oh do I not own that okay wait a second 
Real mowers off. This should be my land here. I don't know why it's not cutting the grass. Do I have to restart it? Hmm. Okay, hold on a sec. We own this land. Why is it not letting me cut it? I don't know. That's really odd. Okay, well, let's go over to the actual grass field and see what happens over there. If I turn real mower back on, it cuts it, but it doesn't collect it. See, there's no, there's no swath. It's just making it disappear. There we go. Okay, it must, it must be because that's not considered a field at this point. That's, that's the only thing I can think of. It's working now. So this is a, a decently sized field. It'll, I think it'll be just about right for for our purposes because we're really, again, only using it for sheep. But if I end up with a bunch of excess hay, which I probably will, we might actually turn some of this into silage just to sell because we make really good money off of silage in the normal farming simulator series. So we'll just kind of see how the consumption goes. I don't really want to make a bunch of extra grass hay for sale because grass hay doesn't sell for very much uh, compared to, you know, the other types. Okay, it looks like the field kind of ends right there. Right at the edge of that dead tree there. Well, actually, is that a dead tree? No, that's not a dead tree. I'm not really planning on expanding this field, though, beyond just a little bit along the lake there. Because, again, it's plenty, plenty large enough for what we're using it for. That tree's gonna have to go, though. It's probably not gonna let me cut this browner looking grass until we convert it to field. All right, well, let's get the rest of this field cut. All right, that uh, takes care of cutting the grass. So, um, let's see here. I guess, I guess we can fold the mowers up now. So we're done with those for the rest of this season. And we'll put those in the garage. And then we'll bale next, and we'll just see how many bales we get. If we don't, I'm, I'm wondering if we really need to even turn this into a grass field. I'll, be, I'll bet you just what the wild grass will give us is adequate. But... Again, we could make more money by converting the excess to silage. Um, 
I would probably want to do that with a fermenting silo if, if we went that route though which means we also need to get a forage wagon but that's not a big deal let's just look at something real quick here I'm not gonna I'm not planning on doing this right now but I just want to um, I just want to see a couple things so if we went to silos and for here I'd probably get well we could get one of these American fermenting silos I don't remember how much that one holds but we could probably get it to go in here we could maybe remove these smaller trees and just put it in this corner over here I like I like that elm tree where it is uh, I just think it looks neat but if we move these smaller trees we could put this silo or maybe a smaller version of it maybe this one here uh, like I said I just don't remember what the capacity is on these well okay that's an option it's an option but it's not one we're gonna do anything about right now so let's take this equipment into the barn oh my goodness I hope that fits underneath the door Yeah, <laughs> just barely, <laughs> just barely fits underneath the door. You know what, though? I wonder if it's going to fit underneath the these cross beams. Is that? No, 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 no. See, I can't lower it down because if I try to lower it down, then it wants to unfold. Yeah, it's uh, it's let me do it. Okay. If it hadn't let me do it, I would have unhitched it out here and then just manually moved it over. Sorry about the camera dipping in and out like that, but I, I can't help it. It's just what the game does. Right about there is good. Very good. Okay, so the mower's put away. Now let's go get our new baler and make some bales. Oh, you know what else we need to get? We need to get a bale pickup. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll have to do that too. We'll, we'll do the same thing with that. We'll just lease to own it until one comes up on sale. Because I think they're about 90 grand if you buy them straight out, right? Which we could afford to do, but I don't want to just spend money left and right because we still have land to purchase and a lot of other things. Oh man, you know what? I didn't look to see what the horsepower requirement was on the baler. Oh, 250. Yeah, we're fine. We got 300 on the John Deere. This is going to make picking up hay a breeze, man. Before I forget, let's make sure we set that to the 240 centimeter bales. I want to make the big ones. With the V-rake closer to the pickup on the baler, I'm thinking we'll probably have more the ability to handle sharper turns than when it's in the front. Uh, this is the first time I've actually used a baler with the V-Rake attached directly to it. But I, kn I knew this was in the Mod Hub, and I always wanted to try these out. So now we're going to get our opportunity.
Way cool, man. Okay. This is nice. If I was still doing bales on the normal series, I'd be all over this thing, but we're not doing bales anymore. We're doing forage wagons. I suppose what we could do is get a sausage maker instead of a silo um, because then we wouldn't have to get a forage wagon not that that's a big deal one way or the other but it's just less equipment it's more work but it's less equipment we've already popped out two bales look at that nice all right i'm gonna have to shove this out of the way as unrealistic as that is those bales are. Can imagine how heavy those things are in real life. Probably three, four, five hundred pounds, maybe. Can I just snag that and get around there? <laughs> okay, look at that. You know, we might need to remove that lodge pole. It might turn out to be a bit of a nuisance on this corner. Either that or we don't bother going all the way to the tip. We just round it off down here. But even with that, though, I still think we might want to get rid of that lodge pole pine. I'm just going to cut it and have it fall down that way. And at some point later on in the future, I'll come and harvest it. Might as well delimit while we're at it. There we go. Okay. We hit it just right. We can pick up two rows at a time. Isn't that beautiful? I love it, man. This is this is awesome. I wonder if this thing exists in real life. It probably does. I mean, I don't see why you couldn't do something like this in real life. Oh yeah, you can uh, you can take sharp corners with this. That's great. Can't do that with the V-rake on the front of the tractor because you make the curve too sharp for the pickup to get. I really, really like this setup, man. Okay, that's it. Very nice. Okay, so let's see. We have, looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 17 bales. It's not a lot of bales. It's plenty for the, sh for the single sheep barn. But I'm almost wondering if, if this is all I'm going to do. I guess I missed a couple spots there. I'm not worried about it. If this is all I'm going to do for grass, I don't know if it warrants even leasing to own this equipment. Maybe we should just lease it when we cut the hay and then return it. Um, either that or this is also a grass field over here. And it's a little bit larger than this one. So we could also purchase this field. And that would justify, you know, having this equipment. And we could definitely also do silage. How much does this field cost? It's another $50,000. Hmm. Why the heck not? Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. 
I just don't see any reason not to. It's not, it's not like just having these two fields is going to take a whole lot of time to, to take care of, you know. It's, it's not going to take a whole lot of time to take care of, and it's just going to be a little extra income for us. That being said, though, is it possible then, if we're going to do also silage, is it possible to get these balers with a silage additive tank? Wheel brand, configuration, lizard, cloths. No, nah, you can't. So that's kind of one sort of downside. I know that the crone, the normal crone bather has a silage additive. Ooh. So, you know, that would be a good reason to get this one instead. Because we can, we can put a silage additive tank on it. Uh, which I think it puts it up here, right? Yeah. Okay. Well... What about this? No silage additive. What about the case? I'm just curious more than anything. Yep. Okay, so the chrome's the only one that we can actually put a silage additive tank on. Which would be useful if... If we're going to do sausage bales instead of silo... Uh, a fermenting silo. It's just, it's so much easier to work with with a fermenting silo, though. So, and and we can put a silage additive tank on um, on the forage wagon. Okay. Well, for now, for the rest of this year, this in-game year, we're just going to make make bales, um, and we're going to put those bales in. Uh, well, we'll put maybe half of the bales in the barn for the sheep, and the other half. I think I'll get I'll just get the the tube, and we'll make silage bales with the tube, and for sale because I'm not going to actually use them to feed anything. Unless at some later date up on our permanent property we decide to get some cows just because we can. I don't know. <laughs> so that's what I think we will do. All right. So I got to wait. Where am I going? I got to go get the mower now to mow this other grass. So, yeah, I'm going to take care of that. But actually, hold on, guys. I'm gonna, I'll take care of that field off camera. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going we're gonna to lease the bale pickup trailer. We'll get the, um, the Anderson trailer, Anderson group trailer. No, it's not the Anderson trailer. It's the Anderson's for the round bale, baler. It's the Accu Accuson, I think it's called. And we'll get the hay picked up that we currently have get the sheep barn stocked and then we'll buy the sheep first and then I still haven't decided yet if I'm gonna yeah we really we really need to plow the field and plant actual field grass instead of the wild grass so that's got to happen too but I don't want this episode to be too terribly long so that I might do that off camera or maybe just show you the start of it and then finish it off camera. Uh, so let's go to bale loaders. Oh, look at that. There's a forage harvester for sale, but even on sale, these things are so expensive. So yeah, that doesn't really make sense. So we want to get the, uh, Arkizen bale pickup. I did look on mod hub. There are a few other types of bale pickups, but they're all at least as expensive, if not more expensive than this one. So again, we're just going to lease to own this. And let's get uh, the bales picked up and get some sheep. So we can get our wool production going.
I'm just going to pick up three bales for the sheep barn. And that should be more than enough to fill it and get it started. And then the rest we'll pick up and put in the hay barn. Let's push it back to here and release it. Oh wow, <laughs> that already filled the troughs up. Okay, let's just nudge these all the way back up against there. And that'll keep the sheep fed for several months, actually. Very good. Okay, now let's buy some sheep. We can have a total of 65 sheep on this farm. And we'll do, we're just going to go right for the adult sheep. So we can get the wool production going immediately. Um, we have three, no, we have four different types. Okay, so let's do we'll do 15 of that type. We'll do 15 of this type. 15 of this type. And 20 black Welsh. Because why not? There. Okay, so our sheep farm is full. Hi, sheep. Welcome to your new home. Make lots of wool for me, please. Very cool. Okay, so we have taken care of the sheep and the wool production. Uh, what I do want to do, though, is I want to go... I want to go into the production itself. Where's the trigger for that? Is it over here? I, th I think this is just for buying animals, isn't it? Yeah. Huh. Okay, well, here, we can, we can definitely get to it from here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's see here. Oh, that's right. We can't, we can't set animal products to auto distribute, which makes no sense whatsoever under God's green earth, but we can't. That's right. So we're going to have to deliver the wool. Shoot. I completely forgot about that. That makes me want to move the, the spinnery down here then. I did, you know, I was going to leave this spot, if you watched the last episode, for a second sheep barn in the future. But, man, I don't know. I mean, it, I guess it's not going to be that big deal to load the flatbed up and drive it down the street. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that as it is. Okay. So, let's get the rest of this hay picked up. And this we're going to... I'm just going to keep this in the barn for the sheep. I'm not going to turn any of this into silage. Okay, this this is enough bales to probably feed this single sheep barn for probably two years. So, that being the case, I'm not going to lease to own this bale pickup. We're just going to return it. And if one does come on sale, you know, we'll probably will grab it. But it just, because all the other hay I'm going to do now is just going to be silage until, you know, these bales run out. And then we'll just, you know, make some more. So it just doesn't make sense, I think, for us to, to keep the bale pickup. I'm sort of kind of making this up as I go. I'm doing more than I had intended, but, it, you know, the more I think about it, though the more it makes sense for us to do that, because I know how much money silage can make us. It's still not going to make us anywhere near what the lumber's making, but, you know, it's just something else we can do. Okay, so that being the case, um, I want to get rid of... 
all of this stuff here. All, all of these little trees. That's actually... I'm not going to be able to get rid of that. I'm just going to delete this tree because... You get, get a little bit of money for it, but not enough to worry about. That we're not going to delete because it's a lodgepole pine. Uh, but let's cut it that way. And I'm just going to lumberjack mod the stump out of here. Okay. So now that we have two uh, lodgepole pine logs to get, I guess that probably warrants bringing the skitter down here. Uh, so let's do that next, and then we're going to set up um, a fermenting silo over there. Uh, I might... Yeah, you know what, let's... Uh, well, hold on, let's just wait and see how much room we actually need. All right, guys, it is time for us to start working on creating this field. So, like I said, I'm going to, I'll start the process, but then I'll finish the rest of it off camera. That's pretty good. Okay, we want this to allow to create fields, which I think is why... Yep. All right. Let's get some lights on. And here we go. Thing goes nice and fast, man. I'm going to stay on the inside of these power line poles, though, because... I just don't want to fight it every time. I think I'll go ahead and plow the placeholder area for the second sheep barn for now, because um, that certainly will not prevent us from putting a sheep barn there in the future. And of course I'll have to lease um i'll lease the john deere planter that i like to use we'll have to lease a spreader for lime and a roller and of course buy the the grass seed too but this is a one-time thing you know i like said i'm not planning on creating any new fields or even doing any more farming at all other than these two fields for this whole playthrough unless we decide to do something small on our property up in the mountains but I don't think I don't envision myself doing that there's not a whole lot of room up there for that sort of thing for one thing okay let's make a nice little round corner here and then just go up this way
we'll more or less follow the contour of the existing area. Since this is just grass, I'm going to go right up to the edge of this. We don't have to worry about driving on it. Okay, we do want to not plow the trigger area, however. All right. There we go. So that takes care of that little strip. And then uh, all that remains, of course, is to plow out the center. Oh, we'll have to remove the stones too, but that's part of the deal. All right, you guys. Well, what I'm going to do is finish plowing this field. I'm going to then go cut the grass on the other field. But with that, we're going to make... Uh, we're, going to we're going to lease a forage wagon for that. I'm not going to make bales out of that grass. And we're going to get ourselves a fermenting silo. In fact, I'll tell you what, before I let you go, let's just do that right now. Let's just do that right now. So... Um, what I want to do here is, actually here, let's save first. Okay, so let's go to landscaping and leveling. And I want, if we turn that to a square, yeah, let's do that. Let's kind of just level some of this area here out. Okay, now <coughs> let's go to uh, buildings and silos. There's the 60,000 silo, the 100,000, and the 135,000. I don't remember, like I said, what the capacity of these is. Let's, let's plop down the 60 really quick and just look at it. Just want to know what its capacity is. Okay, so that'll hold 480,000 liters. So I'm trying to think over the course of a year with these two fields. Because remember, this field will probably use only a portion of it one time a year to make bales for the sheep, and the rest is going to go to silage. Yeah, that's probably that's probably going to be pretty close to to about right. I think. So what we can do, it, you know, I mean if it turns out that it's not big enough, we can always upgrade it to a larger one later. Um okay, so this is the pickup location, but I think there's enough of a a turn in here for a tractor to make it make a UE so we'll probably just keep it placed exactly the way it is let me look at it again though from bird's eye view yeah I think that's fine I think that's fine but we are going to paint That's fine. Okay, I like that. I like that. So when we're dropping the silage off, we we can either back in or we can even pull in forward, dump it here, and then flip a UE to pick it up when it's come times uh, comes time to sell it. And like I said, if that turns out to be oh, the American flag's on the wrong side, though. <laughs> if we I guess we could turn it around. 
Um, but what I was going to say is if, if we, if it, if it's not enough, we'll just upgrade to the next size, but I think it'll probably be just about right. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me, this silo was the small one. So 60,000, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to re we're going to sell this and I'm going to give myself $30,000 back. Yeah, I, actually, I like this better because it's pointing the flag towards the road, which is what you would want to do. Oh, <laughs> that came out a little further that time, didn't it? Okay, I like that. Me likey. All right, so since this happened, let's just stick with it. So there's our silo and what I'm going to do again, like I said, is finish plowing this. We'll go over here and cut the wild hay over here. I'm going to return this. I'm not going to keep this and I'm going to either, I'll probably at least own a forage wagon because we're going to be, be doing a lot more loose hay than we will do bales and then, you know, the one and a half to two times a year that we need to make new bales. We'll just lease a baler for that. So that's going to be returned. In fact, we can just do that right now. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm going to finish these two fields and then the plan for the next episode, if all goes according to plan, let's return this now, is that uh, we are going to purchase our permanent property, which is way up here in the Northeast. Long time ago, I did a, an episode where I, I took a tour of, of the whole map, essentially, and I showed you guys this area up here. But we're going to buy this land up here. There's a bunch of redwood trees up here. We're going to leave the redwoods in place as much as we can. And if I do end up having to cut a redwood tree down, I'm going to replant it. Um, and then, yeah, this is going to be our, our home up here. This is a really neat-looking little mountain lake. And um, I'm looking forward to doing that and establishing our permanent home. So that is the plan, Stan. All right, you guys, I'm going to let you go here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share out the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.